Last week, Pete Weber won his second United States Open trophy with a score of 289 to 184. Dick Weber was thrilled for his son. Among the spoils of victory, a symbolic green jacket from the bowling proprietors of America. A proud father with a tear or two. An eagle trophy held high. And then, the eagle landed. Today, Pete Weber is home resting up for next week's Firestone as ABC Sports moves on. ABC Sports presents live in its 30th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today from Windsor Locks, Connecticut, it's the $160,000 Tom's Classic. In our first game, three-time champion Joe Salvemini of Oklahoma City hopes to visit the winner's circle for the first time in two years. His opponent is the defending champion, and only player to be named PBA Rookie and Player of the Year, Mike Albee. That winner will face the third-seeded player, still looking for his first PBA Tour title, Dave D'Entremont. And the semifinal game will see the reigning Firestone winner from Kingston, New York, Dave Ferraro. And our tournament leader led the field by nearly 300 pins from Oklahoma City, Billy Young. And that's our outstanding field of finalists for this afternoon's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. The Professional Bowlers Tour has returned to the Hartford, Connecticut area for the finals of the $160,000 Tums Classic. This magnificent show place became the home of Mark Twain in 1874. Yes, Samuel L. Clemens, his wife Olivia, and three daughters lived here for nearly two decades. Hello again, I'm Chris Schenkel. I'm standing on one of the many porches surrounding this 18-room, three-level home. This porch leads into the billiard room, and it is the workplace of Mark Twain, where he wrote Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, The Prince and the Pauper, a Connecticut Yankee, and King Arthur's Court. What production. You see within the home, much of the design by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Look at this magnificent library, which leads to the conservatory. When you're in the Hartford, Connecticut area, be sure you come visit the Mark Twain Memorial. Another man from Missouri is in Windsor Locks, Connecticut at Bradley Bowl. Let's join Nelson Burton now. Bo? Thank you, Chris. Huckleberry Finn, the fiction scene setting just north of St. Louis up the Mississippi River. And we're back in Hartford for the 18th time and for the first time for the Tums Classic, a new sponsor on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Now, this is a very important term. It's the 15th of our series on ABC TV this winter. But it's also the last chance to qualify for the Firestone Term of Champions. So let's take a look at the field starting today for the Firestone. Ferraro's the defending champion. He's in our final five today. There's Monticelli in the field. Earl Anthony will be bowling in the Firestone next week. Look at Butch Soper, who's with us every week. Mark Roth will be in the field. And rounding out the top 52, you see Jimmy Pritz Jr. on the bubble in 52nd place. And with me in the announce booth, Jimmy Pritz, uh, what are your thoughts as you watch this final round? Well, last year I was in the same position, and Mike Albee ended up winning, so hopefully he can do it today, too. But Billy Young bowled great. I mean, he led the tournament by 300 pins. He deserves to win, so I wish him the best, too. Well, you wish him the best, but he's the guy that could knock you out. Who's your favorite? Uh, Mike Albee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> A little self-servience right there. Now let's look at how they're playing the championship pair this week. The oil was placed 40 feet down the lane by the PBA Tour. It's very heavy in the front end, up to the arrows right here. Then it's pushed out on the side in the pines, making a very difficult and demanding lane condition. The last 15 feet are very dry. Great pin action this week. Now our five stars are playing different lines. Our tournament leader is playing the extreme outside line. Dave D'Entremont, the cranker, is playing inside, swinging out to the edge. We have two lefties in the field. Albies around the second arrow, and up there is Joe Salvemini in the first match. He's swinging out right to the edge of the lane. Chris, a lot of great action here in the next 90 minutes, and of course, wide world of sports follows. Because on 
Wide World of Sports today, a heavyweight bout. You've got it. Undefeated Riddick Bowe battles Tony Tubbs. And that bout will be live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Plus, the road to the Kentucky Derby heats up with the Wood Memorial Invitational presented by John Deere Lawn Care Dealers. 160,000 total, 30, 16, 8, 6,500, and 5,500. So, the Tums Classic, Windsor Locks, Connecticut, adjacent to Bradley Airport, Bradley Field. As you see, Hoosier Mike Albee, the defending champion, going against Joe Salvemini, who is bowling out of Oklahoma City, is a native of San Francisco, California. He has three titles. Won his first two titles in 1983. One at Florissant, Missouri, the other in Syracuse. Here he is on the left lane. Watch his style. Open with a pair of left-handers, Nelson Burton. You you won back-to-back -to -back, uh, tournaments, right, in this establishment. Well, Chris, it's always been an outside establishment. I won here in 74 and 75, and the general house characteristic has say, stayed the same over the period of 22 years that Red Burnham has handled this operation. So mm -hmm. here's Alby playing around the second arrow, swinging it wide. So the... PBA Rookie and Player of the Year, 1979. You see Albee playing a medium inside line. Good arm position at this point. Slice foot through with that right foot. He's around the third arrow, and he didn't give it quite as much room as he liked. He said he'd like to play around the second arrow. Last year, Chris, to show you the change in lanes a little bit on the left side, he won this tournament from the fourth arrow down the center. Yes, nips it. It's hard to believe that he was only in one telecast last year, but he made it uh, a great victory here from third seeded. He defeated Dave Arnold, Rick Steelsmith, and Dave Houston, winning in the final match 224. <coughs> Excuse me, to Houston's 193. Mike almost missing the five pin should be an indicator to him that he has to swing the ball a little bit wider. That means that there's oil or conditioner on the outside part of the lane. He has to go around that for it to have a strike ball effective. So with the 10 pen on the left lane, we'll see how one of two left-handers will shoot that spare. Easy spare for Mike Albee. Plays a medium speed bowling ball around 16, 17 miles an hour for young pros at home or even amateurs. If you get below 16, that would be very slow. You're ineffective. The ball wanders on the lane. If you throw it above 19 or 20, the ball skids too much and doesn't take a, a true roll. Mike Albee missing the 10 pin. Almost casual with those last two spares. I mean, a 5 pin, he almost misses. And watch him, he just hooks right by the 10 pin, Chris. Uh, really uncharacteristic of a top player like Albee who's going for his 20th PBA title. Now, so Bemini, strike up, can go on top by 22, right line. channel, Sal Vemini, jumping out quickly on uh, the man that set a standard of $298,000, 237 in 1989. Albee is, I mean, um, Sal Vemini is playing just a medium line on the lanes. You'll see where he's sliding actually towards the, almost the center of the lane. You watch this. He'll drift to this area, then he'll swing the ball out around the first arrow. So how many kind of a drifting approach with an inside-out swing? Just doesn't give it enough room there mm -hmm. as he leaves the two, four, seven, eight—a very difficult spare for anybody. But a little bit better for the right-handers than the left-handers, as you see Salvemini not giving the ball enough room just inside the first arrow. He wants it outside the first arrow. He'll play the shot down the left side, hoping to take out the 2 and 8, avoid the chop of the 4 off the 7. Tough shot. Seated 5th in this tournament. And speaking
speaking of seated fifth, finishing sixth was our old friend Palmer Falgren from Lake Worth, Florida. Palmer Boeing just his only term of the year made it to the final game. Salvemini came on strong to defeat Palmer. Now he has a chance to win the tournament. Now, Palby up in the third. Cutting through, and look at that, one, three, six, seven. Albee just playing the lanes incorrectly. He's too far inside, and what he has to do on this particular washout spot, he has to get the ball to the right of the head pin and drive that, drive the one, three, into the t seven. That's the way to do it. Mike Albee could become the seventh man in PBA history to win a 20th title, but he also has other future goals. Well, having met no nicer people than I met in the bowling industry, I would like to stay in the bowling industry in some uh, capacity so I can still meet a lot of interesting people, and, but it's all going to depend on uh, staying close to my family. And I'm sure Tammy, his wife, back home, a little confused at what he's done up to now. Right, Tammy? Still no breaks, leaving the seventh pin. Unconfused, though, Chris. You picked it right out. He moved to the extreme outside line where Salvemini is, and that's where Albee must play. And a real good lesson to be learned by anyone there is what Albee has just done. Practiced for a half hour on a championship pair. It didn't work the first three frames. Made the big move, gambled to the outside line. He's in business now, but he now trails by 29 pins, but there's a lot of frames left. Mike Albee marking with a spare, trailing by 29 in our very first game. We'll be back. And I love it. Okay, Joe Salvemini, we were behind in our time slot. He uh, he bowled in the fourth frame. Uh, he left a four pin, covered it for a spare. Here in the fifth frame, he has left a six pin on the left lane. Okay, uh, Salvemini is in the lead. 27 pins and Mike Albee now will be shooting in the fifth frame with a spare working bow. Important shot, Chris. He's opted to move to the outside line. It worked on the left lane. Let's see how it works on the right. Can he get back in the match? Well, can he pull a Mark Roth <laughs> or a John Mazza? Well, if he didn't have bad luck, it'd be no luck. So, um, actually, he's in big trouble. He needs to take the ball just the same way Mazda did. Mazda went for the 7-pin and bounced the 7 into the 10. All he needs a little bit of this luck to get himself back in the match. Whew. I think all... Most unusual, great champion, Mike Albee. Now with um, three open frames, trailing by 40, getting ready to shoot in the sixth frame. Take a look, take a look at how Albee's playing the championship pair. He's going to come up with a starting about the center. Then he's going to slide in this area and swing the ball all the way over the first arrow out to the edge. He has changed lines. He has the proper line. Can he catch up in five frames? Still can't get a break. Such an unforgiving sport. Albee not playing the lanes properly the first three frames. Had two disastrous open frames in the second, third. But he's been around the pocket in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. But no strikes as of yet. He just looked over at Frank Esposito, Johnny Campos, and uh, Kevin Shippey. Said, can we start over? <laughs> Spare in the sixth. Up now, Salvemini. Shooting in the sixth, spare working. It's our first game, and the winner will meet David D'Entremont of Parma, Ohio. And then Dave Ferraro, who was on our telecast last week, and Billy Young, who, as the tournament leader, meet that winner.
third strike of the match. Sal Vimini is one of the most improved bowlers on the tour, and he tells us why. Basically, I think it's, as I got older, I've gotten a lot smarter. I've worked on a lot of finer points. Worked on my spare game. Been able to make the transition from di on different lane conditions. And it's worked out so good, and I hope it's going to even get better. Salvemini uh, won his first title in St. Louis, 1983, mm -hmm. Chris, and it was really just out of pure raw ability. He's kind of an instinct player to start with, and since then has learned and improved. He was holding his head, but 247 remain on the left lane for Salvemini. Salvemini converted a part of the 247 to third frame where he had the eight pin in there, made it easily needs to make this spare to continue to lead by 40 pins and both players kind of tentative as you see the wife of Joe Salvemini Kim rooting her husband on has a commanding 40 pin lead through seven very good consistently moving along and Kim is pleased we'll be back after this Presented by John Deere, all live next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Fans continue to cheer here at Bradley Bowl in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, because hard luck Mike Albee finally gets his first strike in the eighth frame. While we're away, he also marked with a spare in the seventh, covering a seven pin, and here's your leader, Joe Sal Bemini. Rolling out of Oklahoma City. Okay, it's a three pin for Sal Bemini, who won in Austin, Texas, defeating Dave Ferraro, whom you'll see later. Dave was on our telecast last week. Eleven years a member of the PBA, three titles. First telecast of this year. He's been on 16 telecasts throughout the year, 7-12 and 12 record, 7-1 and 12 lost. But holding the upper end here, and just does so. Bo? Thank you, Chris. Dave D'Entremont, uh, Dave, both players are struggling out there, but you've never won a game in a championship round. Do you have any change in your game plan? Well, I, I shot 215 the first time, and uh, 230 the second time, lost both games. Averaging better than 220, and 220 looks like a good score right now. So uh, if I can take that, if I can get that, I'll take it. I think he's got the right attitude, Chris. He'll be up in the next match. Big and strong. So is Sal Bemini. Chris, this match isn't over. Let's take a look no. at Salvemini with that big open frame here coming up in the ninth. He has opened the door for a really great clutch player. Now, all Salvemini can do is get the ball over in the 6-10 zone and hope to bounce one of them out. But really, just knock out two pins. He'll be working at a 187 pace. Albee still can shoot 193. It's up for grabs. for Salvemini. Now the lead is 25 pins. And remember, Albee has a strike up, shooting in the foundation ninth. Ooh, he almost makes that. That four pin just slides behind the six, Chris. Now, can Albee pull a Kelly Kaufman and come from behind? This is the big shot. Right. Well, that one brought Albee fans out of their chairs, wherever they are. I'll tell you, it has to shock Salvemini. I even see a little wry grin on Albee's face as he's looking down there. He says, I have a chance to win from nowhere. Once again, he has a chance to win the match. He now trails by just 15, can cut the lead of Salvemini's to five. First ball in the tenth. Mm. Wow. For Mike Albee, the best he can do is 172. 
boy, he really has to feel disappointed. He could have come back from nowhere and gone on to win the tournament, defended his title, and headed to the Firestone with an extra 30000 Not to be. Best he can do, 172. Salvemini will just need five pins on two balls. Mm -hmm. to waltz that one off the deck. An all-around champion, Mike Albee. On and off the approaches, he gives so much back to the game. What a record, 58th telecast. Here's his record, 65 wins, 38 losses, with an average of 222. Not his, bad. His percentage of win, Chris, as you bring it up, is probably among, in fact, I know it's among the top five ever on the tour. Yes, as a matter of fact, he is number one. Not today, though. Only shooting a 170, but he had those open frames. Salvini opening uh, the match with a double and remained fairly consistent throughout until the ninth. But here he is. All right, Salvini. Goes against Dion Tremont. ABC Sports presentates Professional Bowlers Tour after this message and a word from our ABC station. Brought to you by the makers of Tums, the sodium free antacid that's rich in calcium. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. So. Joe Salvemini in the first match defeated many time champion Mike Albee, 176 to 170, and in steps Dave D'Entremont of Parma, Ohio, the challenger. And speaking of challenges, well, next Saturday, ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour continues with the most prestigious event of the year, $250,000 Bridgestone Firestone Tournament of Champions. Coverage at 3 to Central next Saturday here on ABC. So there we go, Bo, to Ohio. The great one, the Firestone, the third jewel in the Triple Crown. And one of these players is not eligible, Dave D'Entremont, uh, a fellow that we know very well out here on the tour, but uh, many of the people at home don't know he's a powerful player, and he's going to give Salvemini a lot of trouble. First shot, second match. Okay, as he did in the first match against all these starts with a strike. There's a big one, 6'1", 230 pounds, 29 years old, nine years, remember the PBA. That's Red Burnham looking so serious, the general manager, one of the best anywhere. Red's been with Bradley Bowl for 22 years. One of the reasons the conditions have been so consistent on the PBA tour over that time. All right, going to that left side. D'Entremont. Dave D'Entremont uses the full approach, five-step delivery. Check this wrist cock. Ball in excellent position at the top of the swing. It allows that powerful frame to drive down through great wrist action. He's such a hot and cold player, Chris. When he turns it on, he can be as hot or shoot as big a score as anybody on the Pro Tour. Last year was his best year when he earned 38880 Third ever telecast, first this year. Okay, so now that double puts a little pressure on Joe Salvemini. Both these players are self-taught players. In other words, neither one of them really went through the junior program, had any real mentors. They were developing their games and their teams, and so they've developed their games out here on the tour. Salvemini is as improved as anybody I've seen. Last year in his three appearances on television, he was second three times. Chris, he said he learned a lot about his game by watching the television telecast. Now watch what he, mistake he makes here. He gets the ball behind his back, then he pulls it around his body, and then pulls it inside the second arrow. Almost gets a great break crossing over, but uh, when he watches this championship round tomorrow on his VCR, he'll see the mistake in that swing. Joe Average, very good crossing this championship pair twice. 231, his high game this year was 278. 
Salvemini got into the championship round when Tommy Kress, uh, a wonderful friend of mine, opened in the 10th frame, leaving a 6-7 a 6-7 split after a 10-minute delay in the 18th and final game of qualifying. So Salvemini has made the most of it. Let's see if he can do what Weber did last week. Weber had the same luck and ended up winning the tournament. Leaving the A-10 on the left lane. The ball cutting through the 1-2. The three pin going to the sideboard. Just love taps the six out. Avoids the 6-8 split. Easy spare as Salvemini's got to like the good break. Spinning up the pace a little bit here in his second match after defeating Mike Albee, 176 to 170. And now up to shoot in the third frame, Dave D'Entremont. Dave sponsors himself on the tour. He's been a regular out here for the last year and a half. Is really developing his game, can take a big lead. All right. That's three in a row. Upcoming star, Dave D'Entremont, gives us a sketch of his career to date. Well, I started bowling at a, a very young age, and uh, after I got out of high school, I decided I wanted to give this a try. Uh, joined in 82, came out for a short stint in 82, uh, didn't have any success at all. Went back home for a few years, uh, started... Well, he said he went back home, developed his game through the mm -hmm. regional program, has won eight regional titles, now a steady touring player, can take the lead with four in a row. Leaving the 3-6-10. Those regional titles, his first was a headquarters event in another river city dear to our heart, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana, not far from Lake Tippecanoe. That's home, it. Home of my buddy Chris Schenkel. Chris, as you see, is drifting high here. He leads by 18 pins, the 3, 6, 10 spare. If there's one little shortcoming in Deontremont's scheme right now, it's his spare making. Let's see what happens. All right. Showing a skill today here in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, right near Hartford itself. Firestone Tournament of Champions on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday. Fifth frame shot of Dave D'Entremont. Uh, needed strike because while we were away, as we were running behind our time schedule, uh, Joe Salvemini came up with strikes in the fourth and fifth to cut the lead to eight. Bo? Firestone term of champions champion, and he's in second place here. David, a good match game player, your experience. Do you really look at your opponent when you're bowling in the championship round, or you worry about your own score? Well, I kind of worry about my own game, because uh, watching him doesn't help me throw the ball. And uh, you just got to go out there and do the best I can. One of the best clutch players. He'll be up in the semifinal, Chris. Okay. And with that double, um, Dave's lead is back to 18 pins, and Sal Vimini is up. You just joined us, Sal Vimini. Defeated Mike Hall in the first match, 176 to 170. 18th year that we come to Bradley Bowl friendly, Bradley Bowl. Joe in trouble. Major trouble. <laughs> right through the middle. Now there's two schools of thought of how to go for this. You can either shoot over in the 6-10 zone and slide one over as you see his ball cutting right through the center or you can start the ball over in the 4-7 zone. To really make it, Chris, I think you got to shoot for the 2 and not for the 3. So, Sal Vemini now with his first open frame, 106 through the 6th. Of course, his opponent, remember, has that double up. What a major loss. Working mm. on a double gets six count on two balls. And Salvemini, he says, what did I just do throwing all that count away? Scoreboard tells the story. If he had struck in the sixth, he would have only trailed by eight. Now he trails by 41 pins. What a change. like that. Needs a lot more though, doesn't he? Okay. 
We'll return with more following this. The Wood Memorial presented by John Deere. All live next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. A little slow because of so many spares today. So when we're behind our time schedule, we just have to let them bowl on the championship pair uh, while we're gone. The seventh frame, Dave left a 10 pin marked with a spare. He had a double up down the eighth frame. I hit 610. Well, Chris, it doesn't look like it's any bargain for the lefties or the righties, but the Entermont definitely has the best strike shot to the pocket. Has a 38 pin lead if he converts here in the eighth frame, putting the pressure on Salvemini. As you see, Dave's wife, Sylvia. Sylvia, interested party. And um, the wives so often come to support uh, their husbands when they make the television final. And sometimes the pressure on the wife seems greater than that of the bowler. Whew. Agreed, Chris. There's not much they can do. Salvemini can help his cause here with a strike and cut the lead to 28. He still has a chance to win. His reaction kind of tells the story. He has lost. He's bowled a game and a half. One of the really top players out here right now. And all he can do is get the ball over in this zone, slide the one pin into the seven. If he has any chance of winning, he must make this wash out spare. Nope. Not to be. Both wives watching and they're side by side. Kim's telling Sylvia, I hope your husband has better luck in the semifinal because the days of the, this tournament are over for Joe Salvemini. The best he can shoot is 190. D'Entremont going at a 224 pace. It's just a matter of filling the frames up and getting ready for the semifinal. That'll be a good stay for... Salvemini has hit the pocket less than 50% of the times today. He's hit the pocket nine times, missed it ten. That doesn't get you through the championship round on the Pro Bowlers Tour. Well, now let's see what Dave the Untermont does with that one. <laughs> An interesting <laughs> split. The 3-4-6-10. Not impossible. It's almost like making the 6-8. All he has to do is get the ball over in this 3-pin three, three zone and slide the 3 over into the 4. The ball will take out the 6 and 10. Okay, Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The third seed from Parma, Ohio. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 12 Central Pacific on ABC Sports, World League action continues as they head off to Florida where the Birmingham Fire will battle with Kerwin Bell and the Orlando Thunder. Then, 4 Eastern, 3 Central Pacific, our kart racing coverage continues. Top drivers hit the one-mile track in Phoenix. Valvoline 200, and that's live. And that shot was live here at the Bradley Bowl. Dave D'Entremont is the winner, and he'll meet uh, the great champion from Kingston, New York. Dave Ferraro. And uh, when we go away, Bo will explain the importance of individual strategy and adjustments during a match. Man, I've gone high every time on this lane and I've tried to make the adjustments that I thought were right. Do you have a suggestion you can make to me? Well, Peter, uh, you have the almost unmakeable 4-6 split, and the match is really lost for you. Why don't you make an adjustment on your strike line? It may work next game. Move a little bit left on the approach, give the ball some room. Let's see what happens. Well, that 
seemed to work a little better. That might work. That looked like a pretty good shot. Remember at home, when you're bowling league and the match is out of the woods or you've already lost, try something different. Work on your strike line. Maybe you've missed a 10-pin or a 7-pin during the evening. Take a shot for one of the corners. But remember, if you're still in the match and have a chance to win, don't give up that one pin. It could be the difference. VCR and let Bo Burton's instructional home video score more. Help you solve your bowling problems. Here's what the pros do. Learn Bo's valuable tips on performance, practice techniques, body conditioning, and equipment selection and score more. Only $24.98 plus $3 shipping. To order Bo's home video, call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. Here at Bradley Bowl, the semifinal match will be getting underway. Let's recap the event. Joe Salvemini defeated Mike Albee in the first game, 176 to 170. Then in steps Dave D'Entremont, defeating Salvemini, 209 to 170 with six strikes. So it's Dave Ferraro, Kingston, New York, against Dave D'Entremont. Pro-Ams at all of our events for all these 30 years have been so important. The winner here, Dorothea Gonda from Randolph, Massachusetts. And we're happy to have her in the audience today. And congratulations to this lady, Bo. You're right, Chris. And she got to bowl with pros Mark Williams, Brad Kazuski, Mike Shady. And on Tuesday before every tournament, amateurs have an opportunity to bowl with three pros. And the Pro-Am entries had 1,300 entries here. So congratulations to Dorothea. And Bo, uh, coming up, the big one, Firestone, Tournament of Champions, Fairlawn, Ohio. That was a tournament that gave so much credibility to professional bowling so many years ago. You're right, Chris, and that'll have just a field of 52, but here at the Tums Classic, we had a field of 160 players, average game 206. Palmer Falgren will be heading down to Danbury, Connecticut for a leukemia fundraiser. will be in sixth place, Dickinson, the veteran, Benoit. About 10th place, Joe Furkos had a good winner. Bobby Fleetwood gave it a run until the final eight games. Jimmy Pritch Jr., who is on the bubble for the Firestone. There's a former Firestone champion, Mark Williams. Hanley's won this tournament. Goebbels had a good winner. Steel Smith's getting his game back together. Peter McCourty, the 300 man. The president of the PBA, Mark McDowell. David Houston, the studly one. LeClaire, 21st place. Jazz now, collegiate, getting his game back together. Brad Kazuski, watch that young man. He can play. And the powerful one, the weightlifter, John Kirker, rounds out the top 24. We're ready for the semifinal game, Chris. And they're still practicing and going uh, further down the list. I'm Leto Monicelli and David Ozio tied for 38th. Robert Lawrence, 42nd. Wayne Webb, 47th. And those are names that we'll see in uh, Fairlawn, Ohio, suburb of Akron for another Firestone Tournament of Champions. The applause now is for the semifinal match. And finally, Dave D'Entremont has won a game on TV. Remember, Bo had indicated that he was 0 for 2, but he's now 1 for 2. Match play competition. He's got a really tough opponent, Dave Ferraro, who's in a little bit of a TV slump. Let's see what happens. And leaving a 4-pin. Dave D'Entremont was the tournament leader last year at Pinole Valley in the infamous power outage, and Ernie Schlegel just slaughtered him in the championship game, 268 to 215. But I think that experience has helped David, and he's a much more determined player out there today. Well, we have unusual happenings from time to time in our telecast, but none as unusual as the eagle biting the dust last week, the trophy, Pete Weber. You're right. As you said, the Eagle does not fly on the Pro Bowlers Tour. Dave Ferraro's first shot today. Well, he got rid of the sleeper, but... Nelson, uh, this is not the easiest split in the world to convert. Well, for Dave Ferraro, Chris, he's got to get the ball to the left side of the two-pin, drive that two-pin over into the ten right here, drive the ball into the, the uh, pin into the ten, if he converts it like that, he'll be all even. Otherwise, he'll be trailing by more than a mark. Tried. That's what I like about the champions. They go all out. The Bowling Proprietors Association of America, Chief Wapensky and Wally Hall, uh, of course, will replace the Broken Eagle. And this time, it'll have wind under its wings and will stay on the walnut base. <laughs> Well, you, this is not funny, as the, 
Dave Ferraro seizes, sees his ball just hooked by the two pin. He was a little skeptical of the championship here. He says they're kind of tough. All right. Dave Ferraro bouncing back after that disappointment in the first frame. But he trails by a quick 12, and with a spare up, it'll be DeAntremont shooting in the second. Remember, our tournament leader is Billy Young, holding out of Oklahoma City. And the non-winner means business. Dave DeAntremont, a very much self-taught, natural talent player. He doesn't practice a lot like many of the other players, but he practices daily. Says he practices just three games a, a day and, and tries to practice six days a week. He keeps his swing loose. He's a very powerful guy. Where some of the other players will practice as much as 25 or 30 games even a day, i.e. Steve Wonderlich. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, those that uh, practice a lot like Steve, they have time to go bass fishing, right? <laughs> well, Steve Wonderlick, he does it all. Now Ferraro, just a matter of getting lined up for Dave Ferraro. Second championship round in a row. He made it in the U.S. Open last week. Unexpectedly slides by the head pin twice on lane 28. Chris and I bowled on this championship pair many times, and what he needs to do is to make a move on 28 farther outside and get the ball from this spare right onto the two pin and drive it out. And as far as his strike line goes, get farther outside or slow the ball down. 28 is tighter. 25th telecast for Dave Ferraro. Last week in the United States Open, won by Pete Weber. Dave finished fifth. He has five titles. Dave, a congenial player out here, spends a lot of time with the Big Brothers charities. That's his favorite charity, and often in between tournaments, he'll stop off in the city. As you see him using that full grip, spreads that index finger for control, balances the ball in the palm of the hand. He's ready to go, trails by 22, fourth frame. And he'll take it. Crossover strike. That's coming in the fourth frame. The Entremont leads Ferraro. We'll be back. And Orlando are ready to put out the fire. They meet tomorrow on ABC Sports. And two members of our uh, host company, Tums, Alan Jones, division manager, and uh, associate brand manager, Alan Jenko. Enjoyable people to uh, work with, and we hope they've enjoyed this event at Bradley Bowl is much. Dave D'Entremont here in the semifinal match. Leads by 22. Double up. And now he leads by 32. Here's Nelson. Thank you, Chris. Tournament leader Billy Young just ran away from the field by over 300 pins, but Billy, the time of reckoning's coming up. It's your last chance to qualify for the Firestone. What do you feel? Oh, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way I bowled this week. I'm not going to do anything different. Uh, in my mind, I won the tournament yesterday. Now I have to prove it today. And then just go out and play the pair with what it gives me. Good attitude, Chris. Uh, he needs a win to get back into Firestone. He'll be tough. Back to you. Now, Dave. <laughs> Matt Forbagger increases his lead to 42 pins. But don't count out Dave Ferraro, five-time champion, including... Last year's Firestone. He'll be there next week to defend it. Against 51 other champions. He has a strike up. He's now shooting in the fifth. Mm. Boy, oh boy, they've just been so confused on the right-hand lane. If you look at the style of Dave Ferraro, upright style, five-step in the rear. I really like his arm swing. Just a little bit below shoulder high good high follow through and he can kind of get away with that stiff legged type delivery because he's only five feet seven inches tall any taller he'd have to have more knee bend good gone spinning it there converting the 310 coming up next on wide world of sports 
heavyweight bout to start with. Undefeated Riddick Bo battles Tony Tubbs. That'll be live from Atlantic City. Plus, the road to the Kentucky Derby heats up with the Wood Memorial Invitational presented by John Deere Lawn Care Dealers. A little later, I'm going to ask Bo for his pick. Gloria Ferraro flew in from Kingston just to uh, support her husband here. Well, Dave Ferraro is zeroed on the left-hand lane. He's struck in the second, fourth, and sixth. It's a matter of getting tuned in on the right and hoping that Dave D'Entremont just doesn't run away here. He could open up a 62-pin lead with two more strikes, six frame. All right. Dave D'Entremont rolling along. He won the last match. You see the style of Dave D'Intermont, very powerful as he drives that wrist into underneath the ball and just takes out all ten pins for uh, D'Intermont loose, and he's making those pins move, Chris. He's red hot. Okay. Standing room only crowd at Bradley Bowl. Six. His wife is happy. Of course, Dave is too, but doesn't show it. We'll be back. Bowling's winners at their biggest party of the year. It's the Firestone Tournament of Champions on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday. Great supporter of bowling. Always uh, outstanding job here. Tournament chairman. Ken West. Kenny, a great promoter. Now, David Ferraro up in the seventh frame, trails by 62, has a possible 238. D'Entermont going at a 250 pace. All right. Nice little wry smile from the 31 year old champion. He uh, shared, shared with us why he opted to bowl here this week instead of skipping it for the Firestone next week. Well, I think that uh, I like to bowl in a tournament before a major because I like to get tournament sharp. It's a little bit different than practicing at home. Plus, I'm only uh, two and a half hour drive from here. That's a good point. Uh, Ian Woosman did that for the Masters. Let's see if Ferraro can do that for the Firestone. Ferraro slides by the head pin, or just Nixon leaving the seven. And Chris, I'm going to give you my tip for oh, the Wood are? Memorial right now. Oh, okay. There's three horses to watch. Cahill Road will be leading as they come in the stretch. That's the speed horse. Kyle's our man. If the weather gets bad, you bet on the mutter. But Meadow Star should win the race. So it's Meadow Star. You're vacillating, my friend. <laughs> you better see if it's raining, pal. Okay. Our Longtime friend Leroy Jolly trains the only filly in the race, and the filly has never won the wood. And I think Meadow Star will do it today. We'll know in about 35 minutes this wide world will be coming on. Now mm -hmm. it's Dave D'Entremont with six in a row. Take it seven. A spare to start the game and strikes the rest of the way. As I said, he's hot and cold in the Touring Players Championship last year. At one point for six games, the first six games of an eight-game block, he averaged an incredible 272. And that's crossing pairs, as you see him wiping the oil off his urethane bowling ball. 272, that's a lot of strikes. That's eight or nine in a row every single game without an open. And he's got that going right now, seven in a row. His high game during play coming into today was 280. And as you saw, Ferraro waved the white flag. Also, Jimmy Pritz can wave the white flag, too, because as Ferraro struggles again, Jimmy Pritz will be out of the Firestone. will be two non-champions going in the final match, Dave D'Intermont and Billy Young, Jr. Don't count this man out next week. Last year earned $111,000.
with a Firestone victory, third at Green Bay, fourth at Wichita, fifth at Quaker State, fourth at Showboat in Atlantic City. And here's his opponent, Dave DeAntremont, looking for that first PBA national title as regional titles. <laughs> Today for our loosening up comes from a bowling family, two establishments in New York. And I remember when he and his brother Steve came down to Long Island about eight or nine years ago, and they were both trying the tour. I says, boy, Dave will never make it on the tour, but his brother Steve might. Uh, Steve no longer a pro, Dave one of the best in the world, so what do I know? I think you know a lot, Bob. Well, well, thank you. Right now, I know who's going to be the winner of this game for David Ferraro in the 190s. As you see the wife of Dave DeAntremont excited about the championship game coming up. And for likable Dave Ferraro, perhaps next week will be a little kinder. Okay, there's your winner. He'll go against Bill Young for the Tums Classic title. Here's a word from our ABC station. Okay, let's go back to Chris Schenkel and more bowling. Chris? In our very first game here in the Tums Classic, Joe Salvemini defeated Mike Albee 176 to 170. In steps Dave D'Entremont, defeating Joe 209 to 170. Dave again comes to the front with a big 269 game, stringing them against Dave Ferraro, who shot a 193. So as you see, we have reached the championship match. Well, you know, it's fun to salute excellence. And when you have a teammate like Mel Handelsman, for all these years, 41 years, a member of the ABC television team. There he is, one of the great guys, a native of uh, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. He's uh, retiring from Cap City's ABC. You know, Dark Shadows, you name the events that helped make Cap City's ABC what it is today, and the lighting. The superb lighting was done by that man. And though it's been a pleasure having him make us look better than we really are. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Mel's a great guy. And I have a great young man in the announce booth mm -hmm. with me. He's the winner of the Junior Pro-Am. It's Andy Vidal Jr. And Andy had 300, 300 back-to-back -back and 213 in the Junior Pro-Am. He got started with 19 strikes in a row. He got three strikes in the 3, 6th, and ninth frame. But you had to be awfully excited, Andy. I sure was. You know, Andy, uh, you're only 15, and there's a lot of future in the sport of bowling. Uh, what would you like to do after you get out of high school and pursue your bowling career? I'd like to go on to a bowling college and try to get a scholarship t to enter it. Well, I think you're on your way, Chris. He's a great young player, and we have two young players really going in the championship round. Neither player has won before. It's going to be Billy Young Jr. against Dave D'Entremont. Okay. Native of Tulsa. Shaking out that uh, that arm, getting it loose. A few little twitches here. Wonderful guy, 5'10", 160 pounds, 34 years old. His birthday was Wednesday. Deceptive speed for his action, but Bo, you get a 2'8", 10 to greet you. Once again, we see all the players really having trouble with their first shot sliding by the head pin. Uh, very slick lane surface and the oil seems to have been a little bit farther down the lane than it has been all week long as Billy Young has a tough shot. Just hit the two and eight and hope. So Billy Young bowling out of Oklahoma City now. Made a great improvement this week. Last week at the US Open he's 183rd out of a field of 240. Now Dave Tauntermont, with two victories, is in the final game, could win his first title today, and 30,000, and a trip to Akron. I hit four, six, seven. Two excellent young players have never really experienced the championship round match in a quite a while, and it's affecting them in their first frames, as you see Deontremont cutting through the middle. He's got a, an almost impossible spare. We'll shoot for the 4-7.
Christie just fired the ball at it. And I'll tell you one thing I say about this. When you almost cannot make a split, I don't see throwing your timing off or having uh, your timing thrown off by throwing a ball 23, 24 miles an hour. Uh, obviously, he knows how to bowl. He's bowling for a major title. But I think that's kind of a, a faux pas in his game to take that chance. Now he's back in the second. Settling down to a strike in the second frame against the tournament leader, Billy Young. Billy won his only title in Windsor, Ontario. Ontario. He's top seeded, defeating Bobby Jacks, 236 to 226. He, like Mike Edwards, is proud of his Native American heritage. Sliding by again, but you can make this particular split. There's a chance, and I'll show you how to do it right here. What you must do is get the ball hooking a lot. He has to play a big hook, get it over in the 2 4 zone. The ball will actually drive the 4 into the 8 and also drive the 2 into the 10. A tough shot, but it can be made with the big hook. So, tough to do for tournament leader Billy Young. A pair of open frames, result of uh, splits that faced him, unable to convert them, and oh, that's 16 through the second. Well, he's dominated the field, Chris, and he struggled here. He said he had a backup bowling ball that he could go to, and he had trouble last night. He switched and shot better than 700 the last three games. Is he going to reach for that other bowling ball? He continues to use the ball that he had open frames in the first two frames with. He's going to make an adjustment. If he doesn't, get around the pocket, I think you'll make the change. Here we go. Doesn't mind the seven pin, pretty good reaction. Mm -hmm. This young man started bowling at the age of six. His first game was 21. His first 600 series came at age 14. And he credits his father, who has won an American Bowling Congress uh, championship title, the only man from Oklahoma to do so, with really making him a top star he is today. His dad should be proud. Because ABC All Events has to be fun to win, Bo. Well, it's a nine-game tournament, the All Events, and uh, you covered that when we were in Toledo as we went down and mm -hmm. took a look at the American Bowling Congress Tournament, open for all the amateurs. The PBA players will drift into Toledo for the Masters Tournament in May. Now, D'Entremont up third frame, has a 13-pin lead. Now he leads by 23. Dave D'Entremont, who last year won $38,880, one telecast, fifth at the Bud Tournament Touring Players Championship. And for you junior bowlers out there who like to be updated, Dave D'Entremont also started bowling at the age of six, told me he finished his first season with a 70 average. Improved a little bit since then. Okay, we're in our championship game to determine the Tums Classic winner. We'll have more of the match following these messages. To help relieve... This is Billy Young, our tournament lead in the championship game. Um, we were a little behind our schedule, so while we were away, Billy uh, got his first strike in the fourth frame. Now here in the fifth, he has left a 10 pin. And you see the quimsical look on Billy Young's face. He made the adjustment outside on the right-hand lane through a perfect strike. Then he moved farther out on the left-hand lane, which has given everybody some trouble. And he went high, so he is confused and in trouble. Very carefully shot the 10 pin. This is really a tough pair, Chris, to bowl a championship round on, especially in the left lane, because it hooks more, but if you give it a lot of room and throw it hard, it skids. It's a matter of just stroking it and free wheeling, which doesn't happen in a championship round unless you're in the position of Dave D'Entremont, who's won a, a game and he's red hot. 
All right, leaving only the two pin, but he's been the most consistent striker we have had this afternoon, though, in our championship finals. Well, that's uh, Dave D'Intermont's story. When he gets that big strike ball going, he seems to carry everything, and his pocket percentage has been 100% so far today. When he hits a pocket, he strikes. The winner of this game will go into the 27th annual Bridgestone Firestone Cha Tournament of Champions a week from today. Starts earlier, of course. The final of 16 telecasts. As we see how Dave D'Intermont's playing the lanes, he's over in this position, he'll cross to this position, then he'll swing the ball wide out around the first arrow. And now 10 pin on the left lane. First half for D'Intermont today, and Chris, following up on what you said, the 27th Firestone Tournament Champion, this game is actually an $80,000 game to these players. They can win 50 grand next week, 30 this week, put up with the Tums people. Big match. Mm -hmm. Halfway point of the title match. This is our 15th telecast and a winter tour of 16 stops all across uh, the U.S. of A. Next week, Akron. And then a summer tour of eight events. Very nice. Billy Young explains what influenced him to bowl in this week's Tom's Classic. Well, I bowled really bad last week, and I hated to end the winter on a note that bad. Uh, also, the added money from the Tums sponsor this week, and this is the last week to qualify for the Firestone. And this is a big shot for him. He has two alternatives, move in and throw the ball very slowly and trust it, or get out and just throw a rocket right at the pocket. He only has to bowl two more frames on this lane. He needs to catch up. He trails by 31. <laughs> That's more like it. That's more like uh, what he um, accomplished this week. You're right, Chris. Just a superb shot right here on the clutch. Look at how he stayed down, went through the shot, trusted out to the very edge board. You can hear the thing just whistling down the lane. He's now back in the match. A 6-10 left in the right lane by... Dave D'Entremont in his third game this afternoon has two victories. In his two victories, he's averaged 239. His opponent's just 177. And this match is still not over. There's a lot of action to be had. Out of 269 against Dave Ferraro's 193. And that semifinal game. All right. Leaders by round. 42 game qualifier. Look at how Billy Young just dominated the field. He led the 18 games, then the 24 in the finals. For what it's worth, next week a major championship. It'll be 24 games of qualifying at the Firestone and 24 in the finals. Now the scoreboard tells the story. It's still a close match. Eighth frame. And now a split that Bo will tell you how to convert. We've seen a combination of the 210 all day long and it's a spare that or split that can be made simply by getting the ball over here in the two pin zone, driving it into the 10. He needs to convert this to maintain a 17 pin lead. Anything less, it's less than a mark. This match is for the Tums Classic Championship and $30,000 and a trip to Akron. Billy Young, who had trailed by over 40 pins at one time in this game, can now take the lead with a strike here in the eighth frame. Good reason to whistle by people in the stands. <laughs> That's a three-bagger for Billy Young. 
Let's watch the arm swing. He needs to keep that swing inside out. It's in perfect position there. Keeps the ball inside until the last moment, then says, I don't want to give it too much room. He crosses over, gets the best break he's had all day long. He now leads the match going into the ninth. Must take advantage of that break. telecast last year. He and his partner, old pal Bob Strampy, were third at the Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship in Buffalo, and he is also fifth at Dublin. Now the medal of Dave D'Intermont being tested after having a commanding lead halfway through the championship night match. He trails by 14. Ninth frame, he can still win. Two eight spare, the combination we've seen numerous times today. Dave D'Entremont needs to make it and to get up in the tenth frame and roll a couple of strikes to put the pressure back on Bill Young. Get the ball right here at the two pin, let the two drive the eight straight back. Ball or pin will do the job. Tough spare. Watching with interest here is the owner of Bradley Bowl, Alice Jarvis. And her staff has certainly done a great job hosting the Tums Classic. Tums is a very cordial sponsor, excellent prize fund, and right now to get the lion's share of the prize fund, Dave D'Entremont must throw a strike here in the tenth. He has a potential 202. Billy Young going a 206 pace. Final frame. Well, that's one. He mm -hmm. ne needs a second one and a tenth. Intensity. Wow. Shots. Fabulous shot right there in a really, really important situation. Now Dave D'Entremont can win the tournament. The onus will be all on Billy Young's back. Finishes with 201. That forces Billy Young to get 16 fill in the 10th frame. He must mark in the 10th and get at least 16 pins to win his second championship and qualify for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Thing. Anything less, he loses. not over. First place, a difficult spare in this situation. You can slide by the 6-10. You can chop the 6 off the 10. Then he must make this and get 8 pins. No easy task. Only in practice is this easy. Not for a title. The face. Does it show the strain and the pressure? Look at it. Trembling. Covered the 6-10. I mean, shaking, Bo. You're right, Chris. Now, what do you do? Billy's looked at the scoreboard. Everybody's more conscious of the gutter ball since Del Ballard did it to hand the title to Weber earlier in the year. He needs eight pins, seven's a tie, six is a loser. What do you do? Do you play it safe and jam it up towards the head pin? Maybe get a split? Or do you go with your best shot towards the pocket? Only Billy Nutt, Young knows what he's going to do needs eight or better. Okay. First 
victory in six years. Dave D'Entremont, very gracious because Dave wanted his first victory. The bullets his second, and it's a trip to the Firestone Tournament of Champions, 203 to 201. Let's go back to New York City and our colleague Frank Gifford. Thank you, Chris. A hairy moment there. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Riddick Bowe takes on Tony Tubbs. $30,000. The Tums Classic. Billy Young, there he is. Take a look at that face. Not even relaxed now. Smile, Billy, baby. Alan Jones, Tums Division Manager with the trophy. And Ken West, our tournament chairman, has a check for $30,000. One quick comment, young man. Uh, uh, well, I, I was just blessed this week, I tell you. Uh, Dave Bo great. I had no idea the last game. Uh, he could have won as easily as I did. And, uh, you go to Firestone. Good luck. You. Billy Young, the Oklahoma Native American. See you in Akron a week from today. The Pro Bowlers Tour has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends, know when to say when. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines.